disciplines are boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, Judo, wrestling, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, some lesser known Indonesian martial arts as well. So many things. Um, karate, there's, there's a lot of successful karate mm -hmm. traditional martial artists coming in. So there's actually a distinction between this modern system, mixed martial arts, which combines many systems and the old school traditional martial arts from which it was born from. So the old school traditional martial arts are the ones we know, like ones you described to the to the audience, the kung fu, the karate, yeah, the Jackie one Chan. Jackie Chan. Right. So initially, everyone got inspired by those people. They were the OGs. They brought that Bruce, um, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Yeah. Jet Li. Yeah. So Jet Li. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jet, Jet Li. Li. Special <laughs> mention. Jet Li. Yeah. Uh, amazing. These are amazing stunt people as well. So they <laughs> they bring in acrobatics to the frame, which is also almost Paul's kind of. Uh, uh, system as well. He brings in some acrobaticness to the physicality. Yeah. So what um, we've seen over the years, especially looking at the names that we've just listed, right? Mm. There is a, an undeniable connection, or at least that's how it looks like in the movies. Mm. An undeniable connection with what you are doing with your body, mm. but also they just come off as, as these enlightened people, mm. right? In in how they move. I mean, I watch a lot of um asian films you know with the kings and the you know the ones i'm talking about right mm. where there's a king who's kidnapped or they're chasing the dragon the demon it's like really fascinating storytelling it's really amazing but there's an empire somewhere in the whole scheme mm -hmm. but one thing that you pick up is how they're so enlightened mm. they seem to be very awakened and a sense of spirituality about them is that true with mixed martial arts there's there's a connection with enlightenment and spirituality um, <laughs> this is not what we came here to talk about, but um, now that you're here. Well, uh, this, this, is, this is where I wanted to make the distinction early between mixed martial arts and traditional martial arts. Mm -hmm. Mixed martial arts is a, is a fantastic fighting system. It's a, it's a combination of many different martial arts. It involves um, perfecting one's spirit in combat. Yes, there is a martial arts element, but it's actually divorced from um, the actual traditional values of martial arts a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. For instance, mixed martial arts is considered a Las Vegas-born <laughs> system. Oh, wow. so, so consider that. So it's actually a sport. Um, there, there's a popularity of it as an American system. Mm -hmm. So th in fact, there is actually a lot more to do with um, physical prowess and you, uh, your performance as an athlete rather than your values as a martial artist. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's come under fire uh, among a lot of different martial arts, traditional martial arts people who think it's actually more focused on uh, money uh, and uh, prestige and being showmanship the best showmanship mm. and so we see this with a lot of martial artists you know the conor mcgregor's uh, there's a lot of a lot of there's a, they're amazing martial artists yeah. they actually have that value but they're also a sportsman yeah uh, mm. and so there is a lot of there's actually a lot of conflict got you this. so so what i'm hearing is mixed martial arts is a sport mm. pretty yes. much mm. yes and the traditional one is a little bit more uh, inside out than it just being a sport Yes, so all our traditional martial arts that we love, often you mentioned that some of these practitioners have this air of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because a lot of these original martial artists were, um, were essentially these arts were created within Buddhist temples, right? Mm -hmm. yes. They have Bodhihama, you know, heard of Bodhihama, yes, yeah, yeah, the yeah. original. Yeah, so people like that who um, they meditated at temples and they were granted entry. And when they, were ent when they entered, they became, um, they were practicing the way of the Buddha as well as perfecting their physical arts. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we all talk about the Shaolin monks. They're very popular in Hollywood movies. Right. Um, but yeah, there were there were practitioners, religious practitioners. Who could fight. Who could fight, yeah. I guess basically what Jack is saying that is that traditional martial arts were originally used to develop and find yourself. Yeah. Because mm. you can't know yourself outside of your body. But after knowing your body, you start knowing other things other than your body mm. in yourself. Mm -hmm. But the first thing that you'd need was your body. And that's why it was so important for you to meditate, train, meditate, train. And Bodhidharma, it's interesting, you mentioned him. Bodhidharma, he sat in front of a wall for nine years until he achieved enlightenment. And then he started tra training Shaolin monks. But they were sleeping so much during meditation. Then he was like, I'm going to teach you moves to make sure that you don't fall asleep while you meditate. Mm. And then those moves, when they were being attacked at Shaolin Temple, he, told, he showed them that these are actually self-defense moves. And that's how Kung Fu was born. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what? so we can actually do a whole documentary on the way yeah, martial arts has evolved because it's actually, such a deep topic. It, it, it sounds deep, and I'm quite excited um, and interested to learn a little bit more about this and, and the whys. But let's bring all this to what we are thinking about. Mm. Today is the 20th of December. Yeah. We've got 10 days, 11, until we're shutting this door in 2024. 
Mm. And I think every single one of us, I hope, whenever we are saying goodbye to one year and getting to a new one, we're always thinking about new goals, being better sometimes, yeah. achieving what you didn't in 2024. At least we've been cultured that way, right? Because mm. you can really just reset any day you want to. Yeah. But for most of us, the first of uh, first of January, the beginning of a new year, is embodiment of something else. Mm. And we started talking about the four traits you think are important for us to become. Because that's what embodiment is, right? That's yeah. what you taught us last week. To, is be. to become yeah. um, these four traits. And we spoke about discipline yeah. last week. Yeah. We've got more, three more to go on our list. Consistency being second on this list. Let's yeah. talk a little bit more about consistency, Paul. When you look at consistency, how do you describe consistency? Well, first and foremost, we have to look at where the word consistency came from. And its original root is Latin, right? And the Latin consistentia means standing firm, mm. right? So basically, consistency is about standing firm. It's about doing something over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's about having a quality of being able to, to show up and do what you're supposed to do, to say what you're supposed to say over and over and over again. Kind of like think of you, how consistent have you been on radio mm. to a point where you're winning awards? Award winning? Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that comes with a, with a, a gifting someone. No, I'm just kidding. Could be. Who knows? No, who knows? But you see, that, and that's what consistency does. Because even for me, I've been competing consistently, and that's how I managed to win seven seven titles because it's about consistency so basically consistency is about standing firm on something and seeing it through as far as it can go i wouldn't want to say to the end because there is no real end mm. it's just about seeing it through whatever it it is that's how i see consistency jack what do you think how do you view consistency absolutely it's it's the um it's after all the inspiration is done mm. like what what do you have to do? Cause and effect, simple cause and effect to get the uh, the, the end result. Mm. And yeah. often that involves not just doing it once, but many, many times. Mm. Um, you know, a body responds to a certain way. You can you don't lift a dumbbell once to uh, to gain muscle. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it, it's it's a physical law, cause and effect that you must do this consistently to actually get the physical effect. So I'm thinking when we're hearing discipline and consistency mm. there's a difference but they also feel the same to some degree yes so discipline is the you would say discipline is the key into the ignition that causes the consistency to drive mm -hmm. do you get what i'm saying yeah. so with discipline you have the key you turn the vehicle on which is yourself mm -hmm. and then you're consistent as you drive so your drive is your consistency if you're not consistent you're if you're not consistent you're not moving are you if you have no discipline then you have no key so you can't even start the vehicle in the first place. Mm. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Building consistency. I think that's what for most people, developing discipline, we spoke about that last week. Yeah. Consistency, standing firm, true to what you need to do. Mm. That means you're doing it regularly, maybe yeah. once a week, or it could be twice a day. Mm. But the mental programming that you've got to keep at it, you've got to keep doing yeah. this thing. We want to talk about that in a second. How to build consistency. Would you describe yourself as a consistent person? We are talking about this morning as some of the traits you need to become. Can someone describe you as a consistent person in a positive way? Because you can be a consistent drinker. That's not what we're talking about. But a positive, consistent person. Is that something that you are? Get ready for an unforgettable, fun-filled Christmas. It's the Christmas for me. You guys all right? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Are you all right? Good? No, I'm, good. I'm tired, but I'm good. What a tired. I've just had back-to-back -back things. I had a wedding that finished like 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 I know. On a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. Thrilling activities oh. at Grace Lynn Waters Resort. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah. 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 But if you're in Zeru, you can still drink and drive. What? Only in Australia, where you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. yeah, yeah. 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 How huge is huge? Uh, I mean, like, it's like, let's say you just got your car, right? Yeah. Um, and you only have like three demerit points. You lose like four demerit points if you get caught drinking. So you can you, you just lose your license. Yeah, you can. It's serious. If you just went a little bit over. It's serious. Yeah. It's serious. It's serious. But considering how many fast cars there are there and how many road deaths there are, it just makes sense. It makes sense? Yeah, yeah. People like Really? I'm saying you like here, yeah, the, you might see bad drivers, but they're relaxed. Yeah. Australia, angry drivers. Admission is five dollars for adults and two dollars for children from three to twelve years of age. Make your booking. Yeah, I know some races. Like, it's easy to get sports. Zero seven eight four nine three double zero nine. Really? Like that? On the street. Zero seven seven two three nine one three two nine. Or look on TV. Yeah, hundred percent. Like I like, I like it when I'm like, I don't be drinking behind. How about, how about, but don't take it like, don't take it like, like. Christmas yeah, some, some get flagged, but yeah, I know there's a big racing community where I live. So they actually converge to it. Yeah. Do they put pink slips up? Kind of like it's Christmas on Capitol 100.4. <laughs> right next to where I work, there's one. Hello, there's hardly. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you just walk around an alley, you see if there's red lights any time of the day. <laughs> Gosh, it's already 10.44, would you imagine that? Uh, we were still talking this morning about some of the traits that you can think about um, embodying, becoming a little bit more of in 2024. For you to succeed, and this morning, Paul was walking us through consistency. Mm. Uh, and just now, I was asking you, Paul, how do we develop consistency? And that is, in my mind, finding satisfaction in doing something you need to keep doing and doing and doing mm. for you to achieve a certain goal. I'm going to hand this over on to Jack. Jack, how did you develop the consistency that you have in your own life? Um, largely through trial and error. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't consider myself someone who's really focused by nature. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm a creative. My mind likes to wander. I don't go from point A to point B. I go from C, D to A. You're F. like me. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I, I, hope, I hope there's other people like that because you, you kind of go, it's kind of frustrating, especially yeah. when I was younger. I was like, it's hard to focus in school. Um, but uh, it's, it's more just realizing that there are certain things that I like mm. and in order to keep doing what I like, you have to have some discipline around it. Mm. I think there's no other, there's no getting around it, mm. um, especially around um, training and doing my art and things like that. Um, there's, if you do just a little bit each day around these things, mm. you just get exponentially better. Yeah. And, uh, and I can't yeah. imagine it's, it, as we're speaking about developing consistency and sometimes it's okay to take one step at a time right until mm. it becomes part of you that you've yeah. got to keep at whatever it is you need to keep doing i'd imagine for martial arts training it's the idea mixed martial arts training it's the idea of um doing it every day or often until the movement becomes part of you so mm. taking it one step at a time until you get it right maybe yeah yep yeah, that's it. And um, they, my coach says, like, on your point perfectly, you hit the nail perfectly, is that he says that 90% um, of the work is just showing up for training. Mm. Like, the other 10% will, will, just, will just sort itself out. Like, you'll warm up, you'll stop feeling, like, crappy, you know, because people walk in the, in the locker room. This could be in the same for you, Paul, in the gym, like, yeah. right before training. Yeah. People in the locker room, there's all the negative thoughts of the day. Like, I don't even feel like training today mm, mm. or it's cold and you're like you put on the the gym clothes or in this case it's the gi and it feels cold and you're like oh, i feel every achy every joint and you're like it's easier just to go home mm. and then you get past that um just showing up stage just put your feet on the mat yeah. get past the warm-up and you're like oh I, mean, I forgot where i am this is just great i'm glad i'm here yeah. yeah and and that's and that's what that's how consistency is built really it's about showing up to be a consistent person means that you're a person who shows up mm. when things are tough, when it rains, when it pours, when there's hail, you just show up. You, you must be so in love with that thing that you love or whatever it is that you want that you must see yourself with it, but you don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. Then you work yourself back to where you are right now. And the gap between what you want and where you are is the consistent work that you do. When you realize that it kind of gives you the impetus to be a consistent person because consistency is always a choice at the end of the day 
it's something that you have to choose to do you choose to show up just like you choose to go home you choose to go and read you choose you're always in a state of choosing and if you're not making choices then choices will be made for you whether you like it or not mm -hmm. you know if you're like i just want to chill other people come through and pick you up like yo let's go this way and you're like you're not doing anything and you're like shit i really am not doing anything you so, just no i said sheesh oh <laughs> like sheesh oh you thought i swore i was no. like did you just no I, 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 i'm away I'm, I'm, I'm on national radio <laughs> So, so yeah, so that's, that's how it goes that you, if you don't make plans for yourself, someone will make plans for you. Mm -hmm. But when you start making plans for yourself, that is a form of consistency. That's where consistency even begins. Planning for yourself rather than letting other people plan for you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it goes as far as even the job that you're in. Like, you just wait for someone to give you instructions. You ain't even thinking of how you can do it better. And then you ask why you don't get promoted. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> people who get promoted are, are the people who consistently do better, mm. who make things better. Those people always get promoted. People who are just waiting for the instruction, they will keep getting instructed. Got you. Um, Jack mentioned something that's very key to what most of us go through, right? Life can be hard. Mm. It can be difficult. Life can actually be cold. And I'm, I'm saying this as a metaphor because we were talking about in the changing room. And I can picture that, you know, like when we used to do swimming and it was cold and you had to still go for swimming training. <laughs> ah, what is I, that? I remember that too. You remember that too, right? Mm. But you still had to do it. And sometimes after you get into the water, you forget about that. But life can truthfully be that way. Where it is cold. It is hard. You don't feel like it. You have unpaid bills. Maybe you've just got a message that's, you know, affecting you from going through what you need to do. How to develop now that mindset to actually show up? Because it's easy to say to somebody, just show up. Until you are the one that's feeling cold and life is not that easy for you to show up. How to develop that mindset that gets us to a place where you show up and you build this consistency? Wow. So um, this, I think there's two things that should be mentioned here. So, okay, first of all, the idea of just staying in bed and like, it's comfortable avoiding training mm. perfectly logical thing to do mm. if it's very comfortable why would you why would you why would i do something that's uncomfortable that's mm. It. Mm. so as humans it's like we we go towards comfort if, if we've achieved that comfort it's good mm. um and we we like that we're actually conservative by nature we want to keep things the same and if it's comfortable why change it mm. it's only where we somehow get something in our heads where things get a little bit boring after a little while we get a little bit frustrated mm. and that change inevitably we want to change our surroundings and so we need we need to often it involves pain in order to actually change our surroundings we're so used to that comfort mm. um and uh that comfort always calls back as well yeah. so it's like you know hit that alarm clock but then the alarm hits snooze you you just want to keep going back yeah. and forth yeah so I'm a snoozer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, admittedly, it's the same. Like after a big gym session, I might get an extra ten minutes here and there. <laughs> but that, that's that small thing. It's just like yeah. your brain. It's like your we're all tuned towards comfort. Yes. Uh, and uh, and changing your life, making uh, big changes in your life involves little little situations of discomfort you have mm. to put yourself through yeah. consistently. Yeah. 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 How, uh, how how do you deal with that, Paul? How do you train your mind to not want to snooze or snooze? Two, three times say, okay, I've snoozed enough. Let's get up. Uh, you're slightly different, I guess, because you are born wanting to defy yep. all the hurdles, right? But, but for the rest of us, where snoozing is much easier, what what thoughts should we try to build in our minds towards saying, no, nope, you got to do this. Let's show up. You know, I once saw a video that said that aging, what we call aging, you know, this whole concept of getting older mm -hmm. is investing yourself in comfort. That's what aging is. The more comfortable you are, the quicker you age. When you're just seated mm. on a chair, when you're lying in bed, always in your car, always making this body not move, it is definitely rusting on the inside. Mm. It is definitely getting older. It is definitely not working as efficiently as it could. Yeah. By virtue of knowing something like that, I was like, I want to live a long and fulfilling life. Mm. By virtue of that, I must work this body. I must move this body. I must train this body so that... It's like servicing it. Mm. If you don't service your car, you know you're not going to have that car for long. So if you don't service the body, you won't have it for long either. So in the same way, when it comes to consistency, if you're not putting in service, right, mm. then you notice that your life doesn't just continue to go. So what I do, I always think about that. I'm just always thinking that if I relax, if I give in to comfort, mm. I am aging. Mm. I'm making myself older. 
in that moment. And then I, I, I use that as impetus and I, I, I then encourage myself, love, let's stay young, bro. Yeah. Let's let's try this backflip. Yeah. Let's try these flags. Let's do these muscle ups. Let's do these moves that other people I think are impossible and make them look easy. Yeah. And, and sometimes <laughs> on the journey, sorry to catch you, um, on the journey of trying to become consistent mm. to achieving our goals, to becoming better people, sometimes we struggle, sometimes we fail. Mm. Best example, road test. Most of us, uh, for myself, and let me speak for myself, I mm. think I must have failed that road test at least seven times. Not because I wasn't competent, but mm. I think you know the processes of road test. Yeah. And it's so easy after the second or third failure to say, listen, I'm not doing this again. I'm, in fact, at one point I remember I, I stopped the car and I said to the instructor, I'm done. Mm. I'm, I, I can't do this. Yeah. Um, but of course, it's like, you know, we pass it. You know, he scared me into finishing the experience. Yeah. And eventually, I got the license. Yeah. The idea of facing and dealing with failure, mm. trying to get to consistency can be hard, almost not making sense. You know, I saw a picture that kind of talks about that. It said, this is not failure. And it showed a dartboard with like about five darts on it, but none of them hit the bullseye. Mm. And then it said, this is failure where the darts are on the, the rack where they belong. And the board, the dartboard has not a single dart on mm. it. So it's not always about making the shot count it's about taking the shot in the first place it's about showing up <laughs> yeah wow i love that <laughs> failure is when the darts are on the rack yeah not, not when, on the board not on the board because you didn't hit the bullseye just keep throwing those darts and eventually you know you will learn how to hit the bullseye i love that jack for you feelings of failure have you gone through those and how did you how do you get yourself up to keep going as part of building consistency? Oh, I mean, definitely, like, I mean, there's failure all the time, like, almost on the daily. Like, there's like, there's a degree to which when I'm trying to do something and achieve something, I always have a set thing that I want to hit. Mm. But you always end up like, yeah, like Paul said, you throw the dart and it's going to end up on the board, but it's not going to hit the bullseye. Mm. I even think the bullseye on the first throw is the equivalent of the overnight success, a complete myth. You know, mm. um, there are people with insane talent who mm. can just like, like they can just do it once and they can do it, but mm. um, often they 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 must reach for much higher goals. Otherwise, they're not living to their full potential. Right. Certainly. So you almost have to have failure um, in order to even move forward, mm -hmm. to even have a, a broader aperture to see life. Yeah, I I totally concur with that idea that you know failure apprenticeship with failure to learn success mm -hmm. because failure shows you how it's not done so that you know how it is done. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know how it's not done then how do you know that how you're doing it is how it is done? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. I love that. And something that I also think most people experience on the journey of trying to be consistent, which may make you inconsistent, is burnout. Mm, mm, that's true. That's burnout true. itself is, and I think I suffer from burnout a lot, yeah. because I think I have perfectionist tendencies. Yeah. I want everything to the T. Yeah. But that means I'm also likely to burn out. Yeah. And once you're tired, you're tired. That means you're not going to be operating at the same at the, at, the, at the highest level of efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. How do you describe burnout? I mean, just for the audience too. Like, what is burnout? For me, burnout is when I feel I have been run when I'm running at at an empty tank. Um, I've overused what I had in terms of my reserve. You know, when you're driving. You've got quarter tank, then you've got zero, then you've got reserve. I feel like burnout is when I've been operating below E into my reserves. Because mm -hmm. um, your reserve tank is just supposed to get you to that place. Oh, are we done now? I would not know in the reserve tank. How she kick. And I think I do that. I, I don't have the balance. I think that's the right word. Mm. The balance to say, rest, recuperate, let's go. I don't refill. Wow. Mm. So I'm often operating at E for mm, one. Mm, mm, mm. Survival mode. Survival mode. Yeah. yeah. And uh, for long periods of time on very challenging projects, when you have no energy and you're just trying to get it done, that's, that's it. what burnout probably feels like. Yeah. 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 And towards consistency, I can imagine that will probably make you inconsistent because if you're running on E, yeah, anything can you happen. Can't do because... 140 on on not even E in reserve time. You can't do 140. Yeah, there's no creative thoughts too. 
Um, oh. Like you, you can only do the uh, robotic manual things. I mean, yeah, there is consistency in that, just getting what needs to be done done. Mm. But often, innovation does not occur when you have no, <laughs> when you have no energy. Innovation doesn't really occur. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. yeah. You know what's weird as we're having this conversation? Because both of you are athletes. Mm. It's interesting that you you actually are encouraged to work out even when you're feeling burnt out. Isn't that weird? Sometimes not necessarily not because necessarily. if you really really burn out burn out then you really need to take that rest because there's there's no other way if you especially as an athlete speaking from an athlete's perspective mm-hmm. there's pains that people have never experienced in this body yeah right you 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 just have to take it in resting yeah. you can't take it any other way you can't be like I'm on the mat or I'm in the gym even though I'm in pain like this mm. and that's where the growth occurs in the pain. So you have to give yourself time to rest. Just like even when you're doing a long distance journey, you have to rest and you have to refuel. Otherwise, like you said, you find yourself with an empty tank in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. We've got less than two minutes and that makes me kind of sad. Um, Because as we were talking about burnout, I'm also thinking you said something great there. You said there's no creativity at that level. Yeah. And often if there's no creativity, sometimes you lack motivation. Mm. And that means probability of inconsistency developing at that level is even high. Yeah. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, certainly. Because also when you burn when you're burnt out you're not you're no longer emotionally invested. Mm. Because emotions are the key to creativity. We have to get emotional to create. If we have no emotion in our creation, it's not really creation. Yeah. So as we're rounding up we've got less than a minute left and I'm sad. But in terms of building consistency yeah. in twenty twenty four becoming a consistent person, mm. what's the one thing you want to leave us with? I would say if you're going to be consistent, just show up. That's, that's, that's my word. Jack? I'd say, yep, just show up and, uh, and rest when you can. Even just a little bit every day is enough. Yeah. Rest when you can. Just show up. Get those dots on the board, yeah. even if you miss the bullseye. Yeah. Because failure only happens when the dots are still on the rack. rack. Yeah. 2024, yeah. we are ready to come. Many thanks to our guest, uh, Jack Shand. I hope I said that right. Yeah. All the way from Australia, he's a mixed art, mixed martial arts artist and of course our fitness champ, Paul Baco, who comes in every single Wednesday to get us to a place where we say, you can. You can. You can. 2024 is coming. Coming up next is the news bulletin and we're getting into Sisters Q.